Ahoy everyone and welcome to another Godslayer video. Uh, you can't see me but I'm still here. My name is Andre and today I'm going to talk a little bit about the gameplay and the rules of Godslayer and give you a little introduction to how the game is played and how the rules work out. Okay, so first of all let's talk a bit about the warbands used in Godslayer. Each player should have one and a warband includes the miniatures that you feed um, on the battlefield to basically defeat your opponent. So each warband is led by a so-called warlord. This would be this miniature in this case. And for the troglodytes this would be the Duskborn Chieftain. Duskborn Chieftain comes with its own profile card like any other miniature as well. And the profile card shows the basic statistics of the miniature the abilities, the tactics, the health bar and items that it could possibly take. So this would be our warlord for this warband. He gets supported by a so-called character model, this one. This one is called the Feral Hammer Fist. And then we have a unit supporting the warband, which would be this one, and they are the Ironhide Brutes. So the special thing about units is that they can have several models that uh, act as one unit and um, there is a minimum unit size which is called the core unit and in this case the minimum unit size is three models so you must at least field three of them and you can include additional models in this case you can include up to two more models so the maximum unit size of this unit would be five models to compose your warband you will first need to agree on a so-called battle level. That's the maximum point cost that you are able to field on a battlefield. And the starter boxes offer you to field warbands of 160 points. So that's what you can see right now. That would be a warband of 160 points. In normal games we suggest to have warbands about um, 300 points. But you can easily um, add some additional character models, creatures, war machines and so on to get to those 300 points. But for now let's concentrate on the 160 point starter box um, warband. As you can see we have three different kind of model types. As I said the warlord, the character and the unit. And the warlord has a special um, ability, he can choose items. So each warlord comes with a set of item cards uh, that he can choose items from. In this case the Dustborn Chieftain can choose a heavy weapon, a Morningstar pair, and an armor and a talisman. So at the back of the cards you will be able to find all these different items and you simply mark off the items that you want to purchase for him and pay the specific point costs. So with these items you can basically basically vary the point costs of your warband a little and you could also do so by adding additional unit uh, troopers or remove some of them. So each model comes with its own uh, statistics and so on and they have so-called basic statistics that you can see at the top of the profile cards and they are such things like movement, melee skills, missile and magic, then they have a defense and an armor value, a leadership value and so-called action tokens. Let's start with the action tokens. They are the most important thing right now because the action tokens define how many actions a model can do during the standard activation. So a model that gets activated can act in any way it likes as long as it has the necessary action tokens to pay for the actions it wants to do. So as you can see here, the Dustborn Chieftain has six action tokens. We represent action tokens by some um, real tokens that come with the starter box and that you can cut out. You could also use six-sided dice to represent them. But let's use some tokens, they are easier to see right now. The character model, the Feral Hammer Fist, has about five of these action tokens. And the Iron Hide Brutes would have four action tokens. So what you are going to do with these action tokens is that you actually pay for all the actions that you want to do. Let's assume that um, it would be the activation of the Warlord. He could use his action tokens to perform uh, movement actions, for example. And you would look up his movement value, which would be uh, 3 in this case. So for each action token he spends, he could move 3 inches. You would need a tape measure, of course, and measure in which direction he can move. 
and so he can continue to move as long as he wants. He can do a second movement action, so he could move three inch and then another three inch, or you can directly say you want to spend two action tokens for movement and move six inches. After that, he might be in combat with some enemy, so he can decide to actually attack someone and so on. So let's assume an attack would cost him two action tokens. You can pay them, you can attack or shoot or whatever your model can do. And then in the end, if you are finished, you can say, okay, let's move a little bit more. You spend another action token on movement and maybe a last one for using a tactic or some other stuff that he could do. So that's basically the way action tokens work in the game. And the action tokens, they can be kept during a round, so you don't need to spend all of them because there are situations in which you might need them, situations in which you can react to um, your enemy's actions and do counter attacks or other passive activations during the game. But at the end of the round, basically, all of them are um, expired. And at the beginning of the new round, you will refresh them all. So you basically take them all back and you will have six new action tokens in this case to perform actions during this round. An important thing to mention is that every miniature only has one activation per round. So once um, I would have activated the Warlord, I could not activate it again a second time in the same round. I'm um, talking of rounds. Um, a game of Godslayer is separated into six rounds and each round has several turns. So in these turns it's the time to activate your models and Godslayer is played in a turnaround um, sequence. So basically when it's my activation I can basically activate a model. Let's say I activate my Hammer Fist and after I finished doing everything I want to do with him, spending action tokens on movement, letting him attack or whatever, then it's the opponent's turn and then basically he can activate his uh, models or let's say one of his models. Um, yeah, and there's a certain activation limit that you can do per turn. That means it is never possible to activate two units at a time, but you could activate a unit and a character or a warlord or any other individual model. For example, I could say in my turn I activate the Iron High Prudes and the, let's say, the Warlord. The reason for this is I can use the Warlord to support or power up the Iron High Prudes with a tactic. So I could say I activate him, I move him a little bit closer to the unit, I assign a tactic to the unit or whatever, and after I'm finished with him, this model is, has finished its standard activation, and I can activate the unit, which can now perform all of their actions. After that, I would, my turn would be finished. In my turn, I could also decide to activate these two models, or only one of them, but never two units at the same time. That would be too powerful. So once I decided that my turn is finished, it's my opponent's turn, he does the same thing, and then it goes on like that until everyone activated each of the Warband models, and then the round basically ends, and a new one will begin. Now the cool thing about Godslayer is that each model has specific um, special rules, such as abilities and tactics. Abilities are rules that constantly apply to a model throughout the whole game. Um, tactics are specific rules that you can activate by performing an action. This is called that you basically perform a tactic, or you could also order a tactic to another model, if the tactic allows it and yeah another model could receive this tactic so let's say let's have a look at the dustborn chieftain he has three tactics which are called carnage rage and slam back each of the tactics can affect a unit this means they could affect a whole unit or also a single model or himself if you like the action token costs for each of the tactics is one so basically, if he wants to perform one of his tactics, he would need to spend one action token to perform the tactic. And let's say he wants to perform the tactic Rage, which will improve the melee skills of a model or a unit. So he could just say, I'm going to perform uh, my tactic Rage and spend one action token to do so. And then he needs to decide for a target. The target could be himself. He could um, improve his own melee skills if he likes to. He could also choose the hammer fist or he can choose a unit. When he chooses another model, you will need to check if the model is within the lead range of your warlord. So the lead range of your warlord, um, of this one, is 9. That means it would be 9 inches. 
So every model within 9 inches can receive tactics from him. The thing is that you are not allowed to measure the distance before you spend the action tokens for the tactic. So we have already spent an action token, now you would need to measure if a model is in range. And if the model is in range, it will gain, basically um, receive the tactic that he ordered. So let's say I would have picked the Ironhide Brutes. I decided to spend an action token and I used my tactic rage and they are the receiving unit. So they will receive the tactic as long as they pass the so-called leadership test. This test is necessary to see if the unit understands um, what the warlord is ordering to them. So tests are basically done with 2d6 and you try to roll equally or under the specific value. In this case it would be the lead value. They have a lead value of um, 7, so they would need to roll under 7 with 2d6 or equal. Doesn't matter right now, this should just show you how, how tactics work. There are a few more other classifications for tactics, uh, like the Feral Hammerfist, he has a so-called tactic rumble and that's only for himself. So the only uh, model that can perform the tactic would be himself. Model tactics can affect another model or the model that basically uses the tactic itself. And then there are enemy tactics that can affect um, enemy models. At some point of the game you will basically like to fight your opponents. So what I'm showing you right now is how to get into melee combat. And as you can see I have fielded two models here. This one would be the Dustborn Chieftain from our previous warband. And here we have a Warth Miss from the Nordgard faction. So let's assume it's my turn and I'm playing the Dustborn Chieftain. And he would like to attack the Warth Miss. In Godslayer there's a so-called melee range. And you have to get into melee range with a model to be able to attack it. A melee range depends on the weapon the model is using. So each weapon has a specific uh, melee range. In the case of the Dustborn Chieftain, he has heavy morning staff hairs and um, he, his melee range is one inch. So I would have to get him close to one inch to the wall in his base to be able to attack it. At some point during the game you would actually like to fight your opponents and you can do that by shooting them or by going into melee combat. And I'm going to explain to you how melee is done. Um, we have two models here. We have the Dustborn Chieftain from the previous Troglodytes warband and we have a Warthmiss from the Nordgard faction. And so let me demonstrate how melee is done in Godslayer. Basically, first of all, you have to get into a so-called melee range. Each weapon has a specific melee range and the common value for this is 1, which means you have a melee range of 1 inch. Some other weapons like spears and so on, they might have a melee range of 2 inches, which gives them several benefits. But let's uh, have a look at this example here. Both models will have a melee range of 1 inch. So what I need to do is to bring this model at least 1 inch close to the warsmith to be able to attack him. It doesn't matter if I'm closer or not, or if I'm in base contact with him. All you need to be to attack him is within 1 inch of it. So let's assume I'm right here. The Warsmith would be in my melee range, so I would be able to attack it, him. And uh, vice versa, I am in the melee range of the Warsmith right now, so he could actually also attack me. So how do I get there? You remember the action tokens from the previous examples? We said that the Duskborn Chieftain has about 6 of them. And on the other side, the Warsmith also has action tokens, which would also be 6. Let's assume both models have not been activated this round, and it would be the first time a model gets activated, and it would be the Dustborn Chieftain, which, whose activation it is right now. So he needs to get into close combat with him, and he can do so by deciding, I move, let's put it here, I move 3 inches. So he can move a little bit, but it's not enough. He can decide to move again, bringing him in, three inches further. And now I see I'm within melee range of the Warthness and I have four action tokens left right now. So I can now decide to attack him because he's in my melee range and for an attack with a, a normal Morning Star weapon of the Dustborn Chieftain I need to spend two more action tokens to be able to attack him. The Warthness could now decide to counter attack me 
by basically spending action tokens for his own attack. He has double-handed weapons, like a double-handed hammer, so an attack with uh, his double-handed hammer would cost him three action tokens. So if he spends them, he can declare a counter-attack, and uh, both attacks are basically done simultaneously. Okay, that would be the first option how you can get into melee. How the combat is done, I'll explain later. So let's see what other options there are to get into melee contact. The Dustborn Chieftain could basically decide to also charge the Warsmith. A charge is a special action that must be declared as the first movement action or basically the first action of um, a standard activation before any movement and other combat actions are done by the model. Since this model has not performed any action yet, I can declare a charge against this one. Um, I could also use tactics before I charge. Maybe I do that. Maybe I use um, the tactic rage for one action token, which gives me a better melee um, skill. And then I decide to charge. A charge is always done by declaring the kind of attack you want to use for the charge. So if I use a normal morning star attack, I would need to spend two action tokens for this attack. So let's say I choose this one, then I spend two action tokens and I get the movement for the charge action for free. So I could move two times my movement value plus an additional two inches. This means I can move up to eight inches. I would measure the distance and I can move anywhere I like, but I must move in a straight line. So I must move either in a straight line to here, in a straight line to here or over here or wherever you want. Let's put him here. I have moved him, now I am in contact with him, that means it's a successful charge. If he would have been further away and the 8 inches would have been ended here, I would not have been in contact with the Warsmith, so it would be a failed charge. But in this case it's a successful charge and now I get to uh, make my charge attack, which gives me some bonuses on my melee skills and uh, damage rolls.